Uh, this is find the y-intercept of the line tangent to the circle at the point. Uh, is this in the right form form for the circle? No. Yeah, this that's the point of this problem that it's not it's not expressed in a form that we're comfortable with. So we need to change or we need to do something about this form to make it more similar to what we're used to and that is the standard form of a circle. We want it to look like this. In order to do that, we, we're going to need to do some factoring. In order to do some factoring, what do we need to do? Complete the square. This is a complete the square problem. Now luckily, the x squared is done. Um, there's no other x's, so there's nothing to factor there. But <coughs> for the y squared, we want to think of something we can add on here to make this so we can factor it. We want to think of something we can add on to make this easy to factor. And completing the square gives us a, a procedure to do that. Yeah? 16. 16. Yeah, we take this value. We divide by 2, and then we square it. So if we take this value, we get negative 4, and we square it, we get 16. Now this, the whole point is that helps us think about, or that helps us to determine what value we, we have to add on so we can factor it. What is this factor to now? X minus 4 squared. <coughs> now if we just take this rule. Yes, thank you. The reason why this works, if we take y minus 4 squared, we have y squared minus 4y minus 4y plus 16. And we're getting a y squared minus 8y plus 16. And notice that we, we divide it by 2 because we're going to end up doubling it later on because 4y, 4y, it's always going to work out that way. And we end up squaring this because whatever number we have here is eventually going to be squared when we do the um, the constant times the constant to get the 16. So that's kind of why it works, but really what you need to remember is to take this coefficient of the y or the x, in this case the y, divide it by 2 and then square it. That's the number that we can add on. That allows us to square it. Now yes, yeah, someone mentioned we can't just randomly add a number on to one side of the equation. It would make the equation untrue, unbalanced. So if we add it onto one side, we're going to have to add it onto the other side to even out the equation. Now we have 25. So what is the center of this circle? What was it? And what's the radius? The center is what we're subtracting from the x value. What are we subtracting from the x value? Nothing. It's zero. The y value is what we're subtracting from the y. What are we subtracting from the y? It's 4. And this equals the radius squared. So we know 25 equals the radius squared. The radius must equal 5. So this is the information we have about the circle. It might you know what, why don't you take another few minutes to try to finish this problem up in case you didn't get here.
So I graphed the circle with the center 0, 4. And it says that a point on the circle here, um, we want to find the, the y-intercept of the tangent line right here. So if we want to come up the, with the equation of this tangent line, we need, again, two things, a point and a slope. And again, we use this form so frequently because often we don't have the y-intercept. In fact, that's what we're looking for in this problem. But we do, we can figure out the slope and we do have a point. We have a point here. It's 4 comma 7. The slope, again, same idea, is going to be perpendicular to this radius. So here the slope is rise 3 run 4. So it's 3 over 4. So what's the slope of this turquoise line going to be? From the, the yellow, from left to right is going up, so it's going to be positive. But the turquoise from left to right is going down, so it's going to be negative. So y minus um, 7 equals negative 4 thirds x minus 4. That's the equation of this turquoise line. But we want to come up with the y-intercept. Yeah, pro probably this, the quickest way would just be to plug in 0 for x. I noticed some of you changed this form to the y equals mx plus b, the point uh, or the slope intercept form. That's one way of doing it. The other, as Jamie just said, plug in 0 for x, and that'll give you the point where it crosses the y axis. So if we do y minus 7 equals negative 4 thirds 0 minus 4. We have y minus 7 equals positive 16 thirds. If we add 7 to each side, uh, we have y equals 16 thirds plus 7. 7 is the same as 21 thirds. So we have 37 thirds. 